disquiet, uncertainty, disruption, falsehood, evil, a world teaching, a test of sovereign thought, what is real, who can be trusted, how do we decide upon what is real? What are your authorities? What are the characteristics of a trustworthy person? Can you tell when someone is lying? Do most people think clearly? Do they feel deeply? Do they make the effort in themselves to cultivate discernment and wisdom so they may comprehend the mysteries of the world? How do we establish well-being? Do we find security and comfort in each other? In money? In food? In water? Clothes? Toilet paper? Batteries? Bullets? A house? A car? Electricity? Internet access? In the grocery store? In television? In our daily routines and habits? In warmth? and health and happiness in culture in the predictable in preparedness in pavements and gas stations and pizza in mountains and rivers in leaves on the branches none of these are secure they are all falling all disintegrating it is death to seek assurance and peace of mind anywhere in the fabric of the fallen world. There is no comforting continuity in that which is passing away. A whole dimension that is waning, corroding, degenerating by design. Yet this ceaseless decay is important part of the great teaching everything ending all the time from our first day to the last day everything is always going people, places things all going away fading turning to dust Real calm, real composure, solid, unyielding conviction. They arise from the inward recognition that the earth is indeed an ephemeral classroom. Not a constant playground. Not made for our pleasure and amusement and fantasies. The earth was made for our education and elevation. Here we all are, in this enigmatic land. A domain sculpted out of nothingness for a reason. To teach, to test. A place in which every man and woman is called upon to demonstrate a number of qualities. Love. Humility, devotion, and two other necessary qualities that are often dangerously overlooked. Two rather innate qualities that nonetheless must be expressed in their fullness throughout life. And those are the qualities of trustworthiness and competence. These two virtues engender a wisdom, seasoned in heart and mind, from encountering and knowing three tiers, three levels of earthly manifestation. Good and evil, right and wrong, true and false. Being able to discriminate one from another, to choose the right path, even when we don't need to, 
even when the whole of mainstream life is, in fact, telling us not to. And yet we choose what is good and right and true at all costs. We are to be given dominion over a beautiful, immaculately transformed eternal realm, close to the pulse of divinity itself. To go there, we must demonstrate our trustworthiness and competence. Now, here. We must exemplify spiritual fruitfulness in all our days. Now, does that sound like a tall order? It isn't. So long as we are prepared to be honest. If we can promise that to ourselves, increasing revelatory honesty, then our love, our humility, our devotion, our trustworthiness, our competence will be brought to bear in life quite admirably. We are made for these things. When we emanate these qualities, we prove how much we care. How much we care about life, about each other, about God. When we perceive honestly over the sum of our days, we reveal, we establish, and we attest to our trustworthy nature. We authenticate our competence in discerning the light and the shadow of reality. In these things, it becomes obvious that we cannot find peace in the illusory flux of a disintegrating world. Nowhere can we find safe harbour in its objects and locations and persons and elements and devices. Nowhere. We find peace in accepting the Maker's invitation to care. To care deeply about life. This being meticulously embodied in our daily walk with truth. To heed the call. To listen and respond. If we care in this way, if we enfold devotion to divine purpose into each hour, then we will have peace here and now. <laughs>